Painting a river background like this is easier than you think, and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it. Hey, hello, wonderful people! It's Genevieve, and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos, and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools, and let's get started. Just a quick note before we start, this video is a bit of a hybrid between my regular drawing videos as well as a draw with me. What I mean by that is that yes, I'm going to show you how to draw the different elements, but the main goal here is really for you to draw your own piece so it doesn't have to be exactly the same composition. And it's also a video that if you want, you could totally just mute me and use only the video as inspiration for drawing your own piece. That being said, if you want to copy this illustration and do exactly what I'm doing, that's totally okay as well. The first thing we're going to do is, as usual, create a new canvas so that we have somewhere to draw. Now for reference, if these are the dimensions of the canvas I will be using in this video. It is just the size of my pan screen because this is a demo, but make sure you use dimensions that work for your own project requirements. If you want to have my illustration and use it as a reference, the way to do that is going in the wrench icon menu. In the canvas submenu, activating the reference toggle here, which is going to let you import an image. So you can download my illustration along with the color palette that I'm going to be using in this video that will both be linked in the description and they're totally free. That being said, you can totally follow along and do your own things or your own composition. And I'm also going to give you tips on creating your own color palette. And here I'm going to start with a sketch just to map out my composition really quickly, but if you're comfortable or if you're not a fan of sketching and want to jump straight to the colors, you can totally do that, so just skip ahead one chapter in the video. Otherwise, if you're like me and want to start with a sketch, just go ahead and create a new layer and rename it to Sketch. For this sketch, you can really use any color of your choice because we're not going to see the sketch in the final result. I personally like to sketch with just a neutral gray. The first thing we need to remember here is that this image here would be the background, meaning there would be something else that would be the focal point in this piece, like a character, an animal, something. Not just that. And that is really, really important to keep in mind for so many different reasons, first of them being the composition. So the first thing to think about is what is your character going to be, or would be, and where would it be? In my mind, my character is a human, not too tall, not too short, just average size. And it's probably standing right below the tree, kind of looking at the river. Now, why do we have to think of that? Well, yes, composition, but also how do we treat the background in terms of the visual signature? I personally feel like a background, especially this style, which is much more cute slash children's books, um, really doesn't need to be super precise. As long as you understand what the different elements are and there's a little bit of texture, that's kind of the whole point. And what that means is you can really use any brushes of your choice. It really depends on what kind of texture you want in your piece, if you want texture at all. So throughout this video, I'm going to be suggesting a few different brushes. Some are going to be free brushes that come with Procreate, and some are going to be from my inking, stippling, and texture bundle. But the key here is really to experiment and find one, two, or three brushes that you know you like, and you kind of understand how they work well, and go from there. So for this sketch, you have a few different options. If you're working with free brushes that come with Procreate, you could go in the sketching pack. So again, free brushes and pick the HB pencil. If you have my inking, stippling and texture bundle, you could go in the inking pack and pick the bonus sketching brush. So we're just going to start by mapping out the general parts of the environment, starting with the horizon line. Now you could put this line wherever you want. I'm putting mine slightly above the middle. From there, the main goal at this stage is to show that there's depth in the piece. So that could mean adding a hill in the front, like I have in my example. That could mean showing the river has a bend in it or that it's changing direction. Maybe if we go a little bit further in the back, there's another hill and maybe even some mountains, who knows? And once you have kind of the depth of the piece mapped out, all you have left to do is add elements to frame the piece. Because right now it's all open and wide, which totally could be a look, but it could be a good idea to frame it to really focus the attention of the viewer towards the part of the illustration you want them to look in. 
Again, this is just a background, so usually you would have a character. So at this stage, it's also a good idea to map out where your character would be, because that's going to be the focal point, so that you can then frame around it. And at this stage, don't worry about drawing, for example, trees in the background and rocks and stuff like that. It's really just the main elements. And before moving on to the colors, you always have the option to just play with the elements, the placement of them, the size of them, to see if something could be better in your composition. So let's say, for example, I feel like this tree and this character, they're both too far to the side. I could just use my selection tool here, setting it to freehand and drawing a selection around those elements because right now, again, it's a rough sketch, so it's okay if it looks absolutely crazy and if we move stuff around. Then going with my arrow tool, I can just move them and see if there's another location that would look better. Yeah, I think that's good. So feel free to experiment here, you definitely don't have to do the same thing as I am doing. But once you're done with your rough sketch, we're going to move on to the colors. When painting backgrounds, it could be a good idea, or at least it is easier, I find, <laughs> to start by just color blocking the main elements on separate layers. So that's exactly what we're going to do now. And for that, you can use any super basic brush, for example, in the airbrush and pack that comes with Procreate, the hard brush, or if you have the inking, stippling, and texture bundle, the bonus base round brush. And you can really do whatever you want in terms of the color palette here, but there are a few elements that are good to keep in mind. The first one being that setting the color of the sky can really help you figure out the rest of the palette because the sky gives a lot of information. It tells you what the weather is like, what time of the day it is, and those are really going to affect the rest of the colors you pick. So I personally like to just start by setting the background, so really the background color layer that comes to Procreate to whatever I want my sky to be. So if we're working with the color palette, it's going to be this blue right here. And at this stage, if you feel like you cannot see your sketch well, just go back in your layer panel and set the sketch to multiply. It should help you see it really well no matter what is behind it. The next thing you might want to do is figure out which color is going to be kind of the main one after the sky and any water, which by the way, water usually reflects the sky. So I personally start with just the same color for both the sky and water. But I digress, that was not the point. Figure out which other color other than the sky is going to be pretty much the main one in the piece. In our case, we're going with something that is really connected to nature. But if we look at the reference illustration here, we have a lot of greens. So which one do we want to pick first? Well, without getting into all of the drawing color theory, there's something that we need to know just generally. And that is that the further away something is, so for example, the mountains are really, really far, and this kind of hill here is really, really far as well, the lighter and less saturated they're going to be. So the more white and the more gray, if I can say, the color is going to look. Inversely, the closer something is, the darker and the more intense the color is going to be, the more saturated the color is going to be. So what I recommend doing is picking a green for an element that is roughly in the middle of the piece. So in my case, I have kind of this bend in the river, this little hill here. So that's a really good point of reference. I'm just going to pick that green and start by mapping that out. And if you're using the color palette, I'm personally going to pick this one right here. So we're just going to create a new layer. And in general, it's really good practice to rename our layers. But since this is the background, it's going to be a bunch of separate elements. Honestly, it's not that big of a deal. You can just kind of create your layers as you go. And if you find it to be confusing, you can then use your own names. But contrary to what I usually do here, I'm probably just going to leave mine as just the numbered layers. And all I have to do is just, yeah, map out your section. One little thing though, it is a good idea to keep your sketch at the top so you can see your lines. And from there it's pretty easy because we have our middle greens, so we just need to take a lighter version of it to draw the other part in the back, and then darker versions to paint the parts in the front, again all on separate layers. And just a quick note if you're not familiar with layers, they work just like transparent pieces of paper stacked on top of each other. And the lower a layer is in the list, the number doesn't matter, really the lower it is in the list, the further down the palette is going to be, so it's going to be hidden by the layers above it.
So let's say that now I have my green, I want to pick a brown to do the trees. I could just go in my color panel here and selecting harmony at the bottom right here. That's going to bring up the color palette and Procreate is going to show you a few options of colors that would work well with the one you currently have selected based on color theory, but you don't really have to know color theory because Procreate is just kind of doing it itself. So you could just go through the different options that you have here at the top until you find something that resembles the color you want to go for. I know this orange right here, if I go back in classic, I could go ahead and make it darker, which would turn it into a brown. And as long as you don't change the hue, so what we usually call the color, you can play as much as you want with the saturation and the brightness, and the color is still going to work well with your color palette. So if you're building your own color palette, that's a great tool to have because you essentially just need to figure out which first color you want to use. In our case, we went with green. And then you can just use the harmony tool to find all the other colors that you know you need. For example, a tree should be brown, so just finding a brown through the harmony. Now, just some coherent with the color palette I'm providing. I'm going to go with these two browns here, the darker one for the tree in the foreground and the lighter one for the trees on the little bend that I have. And when I'm mapping out the main colors, I usually don't draw the leaves because the leaves are a bit more fluffy or textured and I don't want to draw them with just a solid brush. So I'm going to forget about them for now, go straight to the mountains and then come back to the leaves in the next step where we start adding kind of more detailed elements. For the mountains, again, you can pick whatever color you want. Just remember, it's probably going to be very, very light since the mountains are super far away. So feel free to pause the video here if you need more time to do all your color blocking. And once you're done with that, I'm going to give you tips on how to paint leafy elements like trees and bushes. So trees can be a bit intimidating to draw, but this is again just a background, so they don't need to be precise in any way. The only thing I would recommend is picking a brush that has some texture to it so it can kind of start looking a little bit like leaves. It doesn't need to be a leaf brush per se, but something that is not super flat like the hard brush. If you're working with the free brushes from Procreate, that could mean anything, honestly, from the charcoals pack. I personally like the Willow Charcoal the most, I think, although Carbon Stick is pretty good, but, but any of those really you could use for your tree. If you have the inking, stippling, and texture bundle, I recommend going again in the inking pack and picking the low ink marker. And then really the idea is just going in with a different green that way you use for the grass. I like to go with a green that is usually a bit more blue. So for reference in the color palette, it's these right here that I'm going to use. But you could always use the harmony tool, so just color picking your grass and then picking an option that is more towards the blue. And here you really want to think of the trees as clusters of leaves that almost look like clouds. So instead of going in and saying, okay, there's going to be a leaf here, a leaf here, a leaf here, that, that makes no sense by the way. <laughs> but instead of thinking in terms of leaves, really think in terms of clusters. So yeah, just making sure you're on the new layer because I was on the wrong layer. And then yeah, just brushing a few clusters here and there. And since we're drawing everything on separate layers, you can always go back with the eraser and just rework your shapes a little bit.
And if you want to draw a line of trees really far away like I have in my background, those can all be on one layer because they're so far away, they're just kind of little splashes at this point. And for those trees, I usually color pick from all the different trees colors that I used so far in the illustration. I know in theory they should be lighter than the rest because they're far away, but I don't care. <laughs> And I'm being very, very loose with my trees in the background, but if you wanted, you could totally give them a bit more of a shape. So you could say, for example, um, I want to have a super tall pine tree. So that's pretty much the main idea for painting the base of the illustration. Now take all the time you need, you can pause the video once more to finish painting your trees. If you had any bushes, it would be the same technique. And once you're done with that, we're going to start adding the details like the rocks, the grass and everything. Great, so at this point you probably want to go ahead and hide your sketch layer. We won't need it anymore because everything should be mapped out by now. And if you don't like having a lot of layers, if you if that makes you uncomfortable, that's totally okay. You could go ahead and start merging some things together like the tree leaves here and the tree itself. So just squishing them with two fingers. I personally like to have as many layers as I can and that is from working with clients when a client wants to change something if all the layers are merged together. It's really not fun, <laughs> but at this stage, feel totally free to merge the layers if you want. Otherwise, we're going to start adding a few details because right now this is kind of flat and a little bit boring. So we're going to draw some rocks, some grass and very simple stuff. And we're going to draw all of these details on one layer because otherwise we're going to end up with way, way, way too many layers. And if I say that, you know that that's the truth. And at this stage, you might want to start renaming your layers because they're going to be more general layers. They're easier to label and they're usually smaller elements, so you wouldn't be able to see them as well in the list. So this one we're going to rename it to details. And for the brushes you can use for the details, honestly, you could stick to what you are using for the trees. So either a charcoal brush or the low ink marker from my bundle. But if at one point you feel like you need a little bit more precision, like when we start drawing the grass, you might want to shift to, in the sketching pack, if you're working with the free brushes, the 6B pencil. So instead of a charcoal brush, a pencil brush. Or if you're using the inking pack, you could switch to the bleeding ink, wet or dry, experimenting with both of those. I'm probably going to go with the bleeding ink wet, and I'm going to start painting rocks here and there. So the same thing as before, either you start with a color palette that you already have, or you build your own with the Harmony tool. Now, if you're painting rocks, they're probably not all going to be the same color. So once you have them roughly painted, you can always go back and just slightly change the color and drop that color onto some rocks. You might also want to add some blades of grass here and there just to show a bit more texture. And for that, I personally like to use the green that we selected first. So what we call kind of the middle green. And just like for the rocks again, of course, go back and slightly change your green and add color variation within the grass. And 
Another thing I like to do is add, I guess, leaves into trees. They're not really leaves, but just little dots, just to break up this solid mass that we have right now. I also want to add an element really super close to the foreground to add even more depth. I usually go with some very very dark bushes, so just creating a new layer above everything, picking a really dark green and then scribbling a few little bushes. And just like for the trees, you might want to add a few lighter shapes within the bushes to show the idea of leaves. And at this stage, if you're starting to feel discouraged because this looks kind of bad, that's totally okay, that's normal. We're going to start adding the shadows and the lights in a few seconds, which is going to make everything pop and come to life and actually look good, because right now, I agree with you, this is not the greatest look. But right before that, we're going to quickly add some clouds in this. Okay, so we have everything mapped out, now it's time to make it look good because this is a little bit sad. So we're going to start by adding some lights in the sky and in the water. And there are so many different types of skies that you could have. I personally like to just have a sky that is essentially a gradient from light to dark. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. So I'm just going to pick a lighter version of my blue and the color palette is this one right here. And then gently paint towards the bottom of my sky. And if it looks too intense, don't worry about it, we're going to bring it down in just a second. But before that, we're going to add a bit of light in the water. So we're pretty much going to do the same thing. We're just going to brush this light blue to create a gradient starting from the part of the water that is the furthest away towards the part that is the closest. If it's too intense, you always have the option to lower the opacity of your layer. And you can also use the smudge tool, setting it to either the soft brush or the medium brush from the air brushing panel, or if you want a bit more texture, which is what I usually do um, in the painting pack. So again, just all free Procreate brushes, the stucco brush, and then just smoothing your gradient even more. So that's pretty good, but we're also going to, so that's a good start, but we're also going to add some highlights onto the shapes. So for that, we're going to create a new layer above everything, below the sketch, but it doesn't really matter. We're going to rename it to lights. And for this layer, we want to paint everything with one color and we want that color to adapt to whatever is below it. 
So to achieve that result, we're going to set our layer to the blending mode add, but add is very, very strong. So we're also going to lower the opacity of the layer, probably for now around 30%, but we can always come back and play with it later. And you can really pick any color of your choice for the lights, depending on the vibe that you have going on in your environment. In my case, I want it to be pretty bright and warm. So I'm going to go with a super bright yellow. If you're using the color palette, it's going to be this one right here. And here, I'm definitely not going for realism, as you can see. So I'm not going to bother about making the lights look super realistic either. At this stage, I'm really just focused on adding lights to show that there is light without necessarily, again, making it super realistic. So what that means is really just finding where you want your light source to be. I want mine to be really kind of here, so almost hitting everything at 45 degree angle on the right side. So knowing that, I can just go over all the different elements I have with a slightly textured brush. So again, a charcoal brush would work really well. The willow charcoal is what I would recommend. Or if you have the ink ink pack, the low ink marker. And yeah, just brushing a bit of light over the different elements when they are facing the light source. Now, if you're not used to painting backgrounds, I recommend finding a reference image you can use, not for the composition, because we're way too far ahead for that, but really for the lights. So using that image as inspiration, yes, but also as a reference for just light placement in general. And with that, it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this final video, please go ahead and leave a comment with which time of the day it is in your illustration. In my case, it's probably middle of the morning, something like that. And if you're new on the channel, you might be very confused with this secret password thing. Essentially, it's a game that we play here on the channel where I hide a secret password in my illustration videos. But the key thing about it is that it does give me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better, which helps me create better tutorials for you guys. And that's super, super, super important. So go ahead and leave a comment with what time of day it is in your background, and then we're going to keep going. And for weather and pieces like this, I personally like to just add some random little scribbles like that. You can of course go back with your smudge tool if you want to blend in some of the lights, otherwise we're going to move on to adding some shadows. For the shadows, we're going to use a very similar technique than we did for the lights, so creating a new layer, renaming it to shadows, and this time we're going to set the blending mode to linear burn. Once more, we want to lower the opacity, for now we can set it around 30%, 40%, and come back to it later if we feel the need to. And just like for the lights, you can pick whatever color you want your shadows to be. I personally usually paint shadows that are kind of purple or blue, so that's what I'm going to go with. And for shadows here, I mostly like to focus on what is called cast shadows. So shadows that are created by an object casting a shadow on something else. So for example, my light source is here, which means the trees would cast shadows on the hill like this. Same with this tree.
And for this tree, I'm actually going to add some shadows within the leaves themselves because right now I feel like they're a little bit too flat still. So just brushing in some shadows here and there. And if you want to be extra precise, you could add some cast shadows behind the rocks or any other elements that you may have. And before we move on to the very last step, which is going to be adding some outlines and very precise details, you might want to use your shadow color to frame the piece even more by adding some sort of a vignette effect. So for that, you just create a new layer above everything, rename it to vignette, and then paint the corners of your piece that are not the light source. So I'm going to go with these three, just painting really roughly your color over them. And then changing the blending mode once more to linear burn. You can play with the opacity until you find something you like. And then with the smudge tool, smudge the harsh line so it's more of a gradient. The last step is totally optional, but I do it because I know my characters usually have colored outlines. If you want, you could go back and add some detailed lines within the background, mostly focusing on the parts that are close to us because in theory they would be the ones that are in focus. So for those lines, I like to just create a new layer, put it below everything that is lights and shadows, and I usually name this layer to outlines. And here you can really pick any brush, but I recommend picking the same brush you would use for the outlines of your character. If you're watching any of my videos, usually the brush I recommend is, in terms of free brushes, in the sketching pack, the 6B pencil. Or if you're working with my bundle, the sketching brush from the inking pack. And then really it's a super simple step, I just kind of go around, color pick different colors like the grass here, make that color darker. And then use that to very quickly add some outlines and extra details. Oh, and I just thought of something. If you do add outlines, try not to add them on the side of the light. Otherwise, they can look a little bit too intense and harsh. So try focusing them mostly in the shadows.
If you enjoyed this video and want to learn how to draw a character to put in this background, I highly recommend you check out this playlist because I have a bunch of options for you. But before you leave, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos I post every Tuesday and Saturday. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.